eukaryotic cell the eukaryotic cell includes all protists plants animals and fungi all eukaryotic cells they are not identical plants and animal cells are different as plant cells they possess cell wall plasters and large central vacuole and which are absent in the animals now this is a, a picture of a typical uh, eukaryotic cell uh, we can see that the individual cell organelles uh, will understand of each part of a eukaryotic cell to understand the structure in detail it has all the membrane bound organelles and a proper nucleus cell membrane the detailed structure of the membrane was studied uh, under the electron microscope in 1950s and the chemical studies of the cell membrane of the human red blood cells uh, led the scientists uh, to describe the possible structure of the plasma membrane now here you can see uh, that uh, the lipids they are arranged within the membrane with the polar heads towards the outer side you can see here these are the polar heads polar heads towards the outer sides and the hydrophobic tails towards the inner part uh this ensures that the non polar tail of the saturated hydrocarbons is protected from the aqueous environment and the lipid component of the membrane mainly consists of phosphoglycerides so this lipid bilayer is mainly of phosphoglycerides now biochemical investigations reveal that the cell membranes they also prote possess protein and carbohydrates so they also possess proteins and carbohydrates and the ratio of the proteins and lipids varies on different cell types in human beings the membrane of the erythrocyte has approximately 52% protein and 42% lipids so depending on the extraction membrane proteins they can be as uh, peripheral uh, some of the uh, they are peripheral proteins which are on the periphery outer side and uh, integral proteins they are totally buried inside the membrane these are integral proteins they are totally inside the membrane so uh, the improved model of the structure of the cell membrane was proposed by singel and Nichol nicholson in 1972 it is called as the fluid mosaic model as the name suggests here fluid mosaic model now here the quasi fluid nature of the lipid enables the lateral movement of the proteins within the overall uh, bilayer so this ability to move within the membrane is measured as it as its fluidity so this fluid mosaic model as the name suggests is because of the movement of these proteins as a fluid within the lipid bilayer so the fluid nature of the membrane is also important from the point of view of the functions of the cell growth formation of intercellular junctions secretions endocytosis cell division etc so one of the most important functions of the plasma membrane is the transport of molecules across it uh, now the membrane is selectively permeable to some molecules on either side of it and many molecules they uh, they pass through the membrane without any requirement of energy and this type of transport is known as passive transport so most of the neutral solutes they move across the membrane by simple diffusion from their high concentration to the low concentration so water can also across this membrane from high to low concentration and this movement is of, of diffusion is also called as osmosis so the polar molecules they cannot pass through the non polar through this non polar lipid bilayer so they require a carrier protein so they require a carrier protein uh, uh, of the membrane to facilitate their transport across the membrane so a few ions or molecules they are transported across the membrane against their concentration gradient that is from low to higher concentration and such processes or such type of transport is called as active transport and it requires energy in the form of atp and sodium potassium pump also cell wall now as we know that a non living rigid structure is the cell wall okay its outer covering for the plasma membrane in fungi and plants so cell by cell wall actually gives shape to the cell and uh, cell to cell interaction provides barrier to the undesirable molecules algae has cell wall which is made up of 
cellulose, galactans, mannans and minerals like calcium carbonate whereas plants consist of cellulose and hemicellulose uh, so whereas uh, in the case of uh, plant cells the cell wall of a young plant it is made up of a primary which is capable of growth which gradually diminishes and the cell matures and the secondary wall is formed middle lamella is also a layer of the calcium pectate which holds or glue together the neighboring cells together and the cell wall and the middle lamellae they form plasmodesmata also what are plasmodesmata they connect the neighboring cells endoplasmic system now in the endoplasmic uh, system endomembrane system actually it includes endoplasmic reticulum golgi apparatus lysosomes and vacuoles and the functions of the mitochondria and chloroplast and peroxisomes they are not coordinated with these components so these are not considered as endoplasmic endoplas endomembrane system so only endoplasmic reticulum golgi complex lysosomes and vacuoles they are covered under endomembrane system so let's talk about endoplasmic reticulum first now electron microscope indicates the presence of a network or reticulum of the tubular structures which is called as endoplasmic reticulum it divides the intracellular spaces into two distinct compartments one is lumen luminar which is inside endoplasmic reticulum and next is extra luminar which is outside endoplasmic reticulum so endoplasmic reticulum shows ribosomes attached to it on the surface then it becomes rough and those which do not have ribosomes attached to its surface they are smooth so rough they are actively involved in the protein synthesis and they are uh, continuous in layer with the nucleus 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 ki layer ke sath ye continuous rehte hain smooth endoplasmic reticulum they are the site for the lipid synthesis and in animal cells the lipids like steroid hormones they are also synthesized by smooth endoplasmic reticulum golgi apparatus camelo golgi uh, he observed densely stained reticular structures near the nucleus and these were later named as golgi bodies now they consist of many fats disc shaped sacs or cisternae okay these are the cisternae and uh, uh, these are stacked they are parallel to each other and uh, they uh, are varies in number so golgi cisternae they are arranged near the nucleus and they have a convex uh, cis face and trans face so they are con- they are this surface this convex surface is called as the cis face and their concave surface is called as the trans face so here we can see these both cis face and the trans face face both are there these faces uh, they are entirely different but uh, they are interconnected so golgi apparatus performs the function of uh, uh, secretions outside the cell materials to be packed in the form of vesicles you can see here vesicles and uh, uh, then uh, the this endoplasmic they fuse with the endoplasmic reticulum and the cis phase of the golgi apparatus it moves towards the maturing phase so golgi apparatus remains in association with the endoplasmic reticulum many proteins they are synthesized by ribosomes on the endoplasmic reticulum and uh, they are modified in the cisternae of the golgi apparatus before they are released from its trans phase so these are the trans phase these are the cis phase so golgi apparatus is an important site for for the glycoproteins and the glycolipids lysosomes lysosomes are the membrane bound vesicular structures they are formed by the process of packaging in the golgi apparatus and the isolated lysosome vesicles uh, they are found to be very rich in almost all types of hydrolytic enzymes what are hydrolytic enzymes Uh, these are hydrolases lipases proteases and carbohydrate carbohydrases lipases they break down lipids proteases they break down proteins and carbohydrases they break down carbohydrates so they are very active and at, at the acidic ph and these enzymes they are capable of digesting all kinds of carbohydrates proteins lipids and nucleic acids vacuoles vacuole is a membrane bound shape in the cytoplasm it contains water sap secretory products and other materials which are not useful for the cell 
so the vacuole is bound by, by a single membrane which is called as tonoplast so in plant cells the vacuoles uh, can occupy up to 90% of the volume of the cell in plants the tonoplast it facilitates the transport of a number of ions and other materials against concentration gradient into the vacuole so this concentration is higher in the vacuole than in the cytoplasm so amoeba may contractile vacuole uh, is an important uh, for excretion and in many cells or proteids food vacuoles they are formed by engulfing the food particles